Salutations Cosmonaut! In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to mod Starfield the right way. Well, in my opinion, what the right way is. You may do what you wanna do. But hey, if you're following this video, trust that this is the right way. Uh, so I've been messing with mods ever since Starfield came out, just checking out uh, what mods were coming out as they were coming out, and I came across stuff that I liked. So I was installing them one by one while going through my playthrough for my YouTube series. And then um, my last episode, I realized one of my mods was broken, and I had to dig in to things to find out what went wrong, and there were several things wrong. And I have a feeling that there's a lot of people out there going through similar problems, if not other problems. So I wanted to provide a, a guide or a blueprint on a set you on the right path, I guess you would say. So this video is assuming that you have the Steam version because we're going to use the Starfield script extender. And unfortunately, that is not available for the Game Pass version and console guys. I don't know. I don't know what to say to you guys, but um, yeah. All these mods that I'm going to install will probably work for you on the Game Pass version, except for anything that requires um, the Starfield script extender. But there's only two mods. So, yeah. Take what you can use, discard the rest, go about your day, have fun. But, let's get started. I'm assuming that you have a clean install of Starfield. Or at the very least, you removed any mods that you installed manually. Or if you're using Vortex. Uh, you uh, disabling all your mods because in this video we're going to use mod organizer. Why? Because I had some problems with Vortex. Um, there was a combination, of, a combination of mods I installed that were conflicting with each other, but there was a patch, a compatibility patch that should have got all these mods to work correctly. But Vortex has this weird thing dealing with load order. I feel it's overly convoluted and complicated to get it to work, and the compatibility patch just didn't even show up on that load order uh, tool utility that Vortex has. So I couldn't specifically specify to load that patch or the compatibility patch last. So I looked into Mod Organizer 2, see where they were sitting in their development for Starfield. And it looks like they have a working version of Mod Organizer 2 that works very well with Starfield. And I've had zero problems. It's just perfect. As Todd Howard would say, it just worked. But you have to, um, but you have to download it discord but don't worry i have all the links to everything we're doing in this video down below so i'm going to demonstrate how to or help you install starfield by installing the mods that i personally use on my playthrough so first things first we're going to start with starfield script extender before you install anything it's very important that you go over the installation instructions on each and every mod because i'm assuming that you're going to add your own mods on top of this so yeah, just make sure you're doing your due diligence and in reading the installation. So it says copy the DLL and the exe files into your Starfield folder. So this one, you just click on files and we're not gonna use mod manager. I don't even know why they have a mod manager option here because there's no mod manager that could install SFSE for you. So manually download that. And mine's going to my downloads folder. Yours may be going somewhere else. I'm assuming you know where your downloads are going. So go into your downloads folder, open up that zip file. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. You don't need to worry about that. Open these up and what they're talking about is this DLL and this .exe. So let me minimize this, open up my Starfield folder. There's Starfield right there. So for Steam, it's in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Starfield. You guys probably know where it is. I have a link specifically to the co uh, Common folder of my Steam library, I suggest you do the same. So you don't have to keep digging through directories to get to it. But anyways, you're gonna highlight these by control clicking them and then you would drag it into here. Now, it's saying replace files for me because I've already have it installed, but you would just, you know, install it. All right, so now that SFSE is done, we're now gonna install Mod Organizer 2. So, the link's down below. You're going to come to the Mod Organizer 2's page, click on Dev Builds, and I want you to uh, download the archive version. There we go. Can preview file, whatever. We trust them. Click download. Download anyway. Google Drive can't scan for viruses. Oh no, please don't hurt my computer. So we're going into the downloads folder. So many tabs open. I got everything in order the way I want it. Let's close this. Let's close this. Don't worry about reshade. We'll get to that. That's going to be the last step. So go into your downloads folder, and we're going to go into Mod Organizer. So we're gonna open that zip. Now you need to decide where you're gonna um, 
install or unpack Mod Organizer 2. Me, I like to go into my root directory. You can put it wherever you want. Just don't put it into program files. I, I, I don't know why. It's just through my years of modding Skyrim and other Bethesda games. People are like, don't install your mods into program files. I don't know why. I didn't look into it. So for me, it's just like a superstition that I'm afraid to break. But go into wherever you want to put it. I'm going to put mine in my root directory. And I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm just going to call it Mod Organizer Starfield. Ooh, so creative. I know. So we're going to go and do this. Highlight everything there. Drop it into Mod Organizer Starfield. That's done. And now you can delete that stuff from your downloads folder. You don't need to keep it. So go back, go into Mod Organizer Starfield, look for Mod Organizer.exe. You can start it up from here if you want, but you know, I want to make this as clean as possible, easy to understand. So right click on it. And uh, I'm using Windows 11, so I have to click show more, show more options. But for Windows 10 people, you'll already see this. So you come here, come to send to desktop as a shortcut. Now we can close this out. We don't have to worry about that folder again. So it sent it here. And um, you could rename this. I would probably rename it as Starfield Mod Organizer, whatever. And if you want to change the icon, uh, go into properties and change icon and then go to the Starfield folder, click on starfield.exe and then you'll have the Starfield icon for you. But anyways, let's open up Mod Organizer. Oh, we can close this now. We don't need Discord anymore. All right, so open up Mod Organizer. From here, don't be confused. Click on create new instance. What is an instance? An instance is full set of stuff, whatever. Click next. We're gonna create a portable instance. Find Starfield. And uh, for um, your Xbox Game Pass guys, I think it'll work. It should show up here. So I don't know, I don't have the, um, the Game Pass version, but you could try it, try it. Maybe Mod Organizer 2 will work for you. Hopefully it does. So click next. Location, it's just gonna, um, you know, that's where you put it, Mod Organizer Star, Starfield. It's in the C directory, create new instance. We're gonna create it there. Click next and just finish. Launch the new instance. And this way you'll get a blinding white screen. First thing I like to do is click on the wrench and spanner or wrench and screwdriver, whatever, I like spanner. And we're gonna go into theme and we're gonna choose one. I'm gonna go with dark mode and click okay. Ah, feels so good. Let's go and open this up. Yeah, let's open it up. And now over here, right right here, this is executable that you're gonna start. So since we have SFSE installed, we're gonna use the SFSE loader to install the game. You're no longer gonna click on like starfield.exe, whatever. So this is what we're gonna use. Let's go ahead and create a shortcut to the desktop. So yeah, click here, desktop. And boom, there it is, ugly ass icon, rename it, change the icon to whatever you want. But from now on, when you launch Starfield, you're gonna use that link that you just created. All right, great. Now, another thing we gotta do is make sure, oh, make sure you have a Nexus Mods account. You need it. So go back into the Wrench and Spanner, click on Nexus. Mine is always is already associated, um, or rather, mine is already connected to my Nexus account. You see this button for you to be highlighted, click it, go through the steps, log into Nexus and all that stuff and then it'll say connected and also click on associate with download with my uh, manager links right here. And mod organizer is not set up to handle NXM links. You know, the button that says download with mod manager, that's what this is associating it with. Click yes. And then you could click okay. And now you're ready to install mods. Hey, this is JT from the future. It looks like I missed an important step and it's very important. Without this, you can't really mod Starfield. So as soon as you have Mod Organizer set up the way you like the themes and you're connected to your Nexus account or whatever, come up here to the puzzle piece looking thing here. Click on this, go into ini.editor, click on starfieldcustom.ini. And yeah, when you look at like uh, in the installation instructions for a lot of um, mods for Starfield, they're gonna tell you to look for your uh, starfieldcustom.ini or to create the Starfield custom ini in a, this very specific location. Well, you don't have to worry about all that headache. Just come here. Click on starfield.customini and I want you to copy and paste this entry. I'm gonna have this entry in the description down below so it should be very easy for you to copy and paste it. Don't worry about this. We'll get to this in a later step. But anyways, sorry about that. 
Oh yeah, click save and then close it. <laughs> so what's the first mod that we're gonna install? So SFSE is done, we're gonna download Baka. Disable my game's folder. For some reason, this is the first Bethesda game that decides to put a data folder in your my game, my you know, my documents, my game, Starfield folder. And that can be very confusing. And this is what Vortex kind of got confused about. Certain mods that require you to install something in the interface folder, in the data folder. It's like sometimes it'll work if you put in the documents version of data, or sometimes it'll work with the Starfield version of data. And Vortex is hit and miss with that sometimes. So I was like, all right, let me just manually install this bitch into both of these data folders. Well, what this mod does, it combines or makes it so that Starfield will treat the data folder in the Starfield directory as the actual data folder and will disregard the data folder in the documents version of the data folder. Wow, I said a lot of words. I hope hopefully that wasn't confusing. But we're going to install this, click on files and click on mod manager download. And then click on download and then download started. Open up mod organizer. So up here, you see these tabs, plugins. I'm not gonna mess with any mods that has plugins until there's a version of SSE edit for Starfield. Because I like to look at what records that these plugins are doing. And um, especially if you have more than one mod that uses plugins and you need to make um, a compatibility patch, you need SSE edit or the Starfield version of SSE edit to make your own patch. But, that, but that's for another video, and that's not even available yet until the creation kit or whatever comes out. So, click on Downloads, and here it is. Baka, kill my games folder. And we're going to leave that name as it is. Click OK. And there it is. It's right here. So, check that box. And now it's installed, just like that. And now, from there, we're going to go into Baka Achievement Enabler. And what this is do, it prevents achievements from being disabled with mods. So as soon as you in, uh, install mods, or if you use console commands, oh no, the game's modded, achievements are disabled. Well, this makes it so they won't be disabled. So let's go ahead and install that. Click Mod Manager Download. Download. Download started. Go back into Mod Organizer. There it is. Baka Achievement Enabler. Keep the name. You could change it, but I wouldn't. Boop. Activate. There, those two mods are done. And now we're gonna get into some stuff that I love, the UI stuff. But before we do, I like to keep things organized. You don't have to do this, but I like to do it. So I'm clicking right here on this wrench and spanner and I'm going to create separator and I'm gonna type in user interface, click okay. And now you got this nice little divider. So yeah, anyways. First one we're gonna install is Star UI Inventory. Star UI Inventory improves all inventory screens for the use on PC because Star, uh, Starfield, the default UI is more geared towards the console guys. Nothing wrong with that, but you know, we're playing on PC. So what I like is, um, yeah, it gives you a lot more information. Everything's a bit more compact and you could, you know, make easy, easier comparisons between items. And you could even click on these little tabs up here, but, but to organize it by whatever these values are that you want. And you could even click this and add even more values that you want. But anyways, that's what that is. So we're gonna install this, click on files, go to Mod Manager download. It's downloading, open up Mod Manager again, and let's install star UI. And now this is what's called a full mod. So there's uh, different options that you can go with depending on what your rig is set up for. We're not using Vortex, we're using Mod Organizer 2. So click on this. Now FPS, this is going to depend on your rig. Yeah, Todd Howard kind of put his foot in his mouth, didn't he? When he said, yeah, it's optimized, you just need a new computer. Whatever he said, what he should have said was, it's optimized, you may need to tweak your settings, is what he said. But yeah, if that made you feel bad, don't, don't, don't let it make you feel bad. If it made you feel like you had a small PP. hey, you have a big PP. But um, <laughs> you know, going by if you could push 120 frames, my system can. So I'm gonna choose 120 frames. Uh, 60 is probably the best overall. So choose choose whichever one suits you. So yeah, I I'm running a 4090, so I can go with a 120. And um, yeah, using 4090, it's overkill. Um, maybe I'm overcompensating. Maybe that means I have a small PP. I don't know. Click on next. And now here, please read the files. You don't have to read the files. So let's go ahead and install that. Star UI is here. Okay, next mod. We're going to install Smooth Ship Reticle. 120 FPS Smooth UI fixes the spaceship targeting reticle looking choppy. Also includes an option to boost every UI element to 120 FPS. You know, when you're targeting, it just feels sluggish. 
you know, when you're navigating your spaceship, you know, this is your throttle throttle indicator, and it just feels really, yeah, sluggish. So here we are. Standard option just makes the ship reticle smoother without affecting any other UI elements. This is the one we're going to go with. So click on Mod Manager Download. Because we don't want this mod to do more than it's supposed to. This is supposed to just deal with the reticle. We don't want it to smooth all the UI stuff. We're going to do that ourselves anyway. So go back into Mod Manager. There it is. Smooth reticle. Uh, reticle. Yeah. Activate it. There it is. Next up, next mod. So next mod, we're gonna install undelayed menus. This mod's goal is to significantly improve the user's experience by enhancing their responsiveness and efficiency of in-game menus. You know, when you go to your maps or whatever, your inventory, the transition animations make it feel a little bit slower or not as responsive as it could be. Well, this fixes that. So let's go ahead and click on files. And we're gonna go with the latest version. This is 60 FPS. So for most people, you guys will probably go with this, but you know, use your discretion, evaluate your rig, what kind of frames are you usually getting? So I'm gonna go with the 120 FPS. So click on my manager download. And I didn't notice if there was a message, so I'm gonna click download. There it is, download started. Let's go back into my manager. A file with the same name, okay, so it did. If you get this message, a file with the same name has already been downloaded, just click no. You don't need to download it twice. So double click to install this on delayed menus. Okay, check that box. It is now installed. Hey, this is JT from the future again. So I forgot I had to do this to make these two mods work. What am I talking about? I'm talking about star UI and undelayed menus. I forgot I had to do this to get this to work. I forgot I had this problem, but this is how you fix it. Um, ultimately, these kind of don't play together nicely. So what you have to do is uh, you should have installed undelayed uh, menu first, but it doesn't matter because we were using orga uh, mod organizer too. So just drag undelayed menus above star UI. And then from here, I'm following the instructions here. That's a uh, pin post under undelayed menus. I forgot I did this to get it to work. So what you gotta do is right click on star UI, go into open in explore, go into interface, then look for star UI inventory.ini. Open this up, drag that out of the way so you can see what we're doing. And we need to find this entry. The entry is B instant open close animations. The easiest way to do this is to highlight this, copy and paste it. I'm pressing control C, come back over here, press control F to bring up the um, the search window here and then paste in um, the entry, they click the down arrow. And there it is. And what you need to do is um, locate this and set this instance to one. Right now it's at zero. Change that to one. Save. Close it. And now you're good to go. <laughs> Next mod, Compact Mission UI. Modifies the mission menu so more items can be seen at once. Increases viewable items by 50%. So yeah. So it just kind of compacts this a little bit so you can see a bit more of your missions and so you have to scroll less. But this is awesome. Once again, the UI was catered around like the console. This makes it a better PC experience. So let's go ahead and install this, these files. And once again, we have FPS, different FPS versions. So I'm gonna go with 120, go with what you need. Mod Manager download, download started, cool. Go back into Mod Manager, double click this and install this. And now, there we go. Compact Ship Builder UI. Modifies the ship builder menu so more items can be seen at once. Increases viewable items by 33%. Basically the ship builder version of uh, this one. Compact mission, anyways. You know, you know, you know the drill. Click on files. Go with uh, whatever FPS you want. I'm going with 120 again. Download has started. Let's go ahead and install that bitch. Double click. Why's it gotta be a bitch? I don't know. Click OK. Activate that. All right, that one's done. Better hood. I love this mod so much. You know, you get that stupid banner in the middle of the screen whenever you discover a new location or every time you kill or gather or craft something, you get that XP message in the middle of the screen. I used a version that uh, lowers that, uh, those banners to the bottom of your screen here. But there's uh, other versions here. Take a look, take a gander. Which one do you like? But I'm gonna go with this one. Just location and XP. My manager download. Download started. And yeah, install it. Boop. Activate. Excellent. 
Scanner encumbrance display with time. This will add an encumbrance display to your scanner watch interface. So um, I'm gonna go with the version that also gives the time and not just encumbrance. But yeah, see, shows the encumbrance here. Version I'm gonna use, I don't know if they have a picture here. That shows the time. Yeah, here it is, where it shows the time of day here. That way you don't have to find like a bench to sit on and open up your wait menu to see what time it is. But yeah, here we go. Oh, it's just built in now. I seem to remember last time I was here, it was like different versions, but just one version now. So encumbrance and time is now in one nice, nice package. So mod manager download, go back to mod manager, install it. I yeah, say this is so easy, isn't it? So freaking easy. And I, what I love about mod manager is how clean it is. You can see, I mean, vortex, you could easily see what mods you have here, but there is another advantage to mod manager over vortex. And I'll demonstrate that a little bit later. Okay. Next up. Going into enhanced player boost bar. Um, the reason why I go here instead of, say, for instance, enhanced player health bar, because from here you can get a combination of both the boost and the health bar, and it basically gives you an indicator, a better indicator uh, of your health bar. Like in vanilla, it stays white until you get to, I want to say, 35 or 40 percent where it turns red this is a better gradient starts off as white you take like 25 percent damage turns yellow another 25 percent more damage turns orange or the version i'm going to use turns orange and then finally red so it just catches your eye better because there's a lot of times where i'm almost you know in fights i've come to the close to the point of death and i don't even notice until after the fight but anyways go into files and the version i'm going to download is white yellow orange red you can go with green yellow orange red whatever you want but I'm gonna go with this version here. So mod manager download. Go into mods, double click here to install it. And now it's installed. And the next mod we're gonna install is actually a patch. So better HUD, enhanced player health bar and boost bar, and scanner encumbrance display with time patch, or time. Those three mods conflict with each other. And depending on your load order, one mod will overwrite the other mod and it'll break whatever mod it overwrote. Uh, this patch makes it so that these three mods will play nice with each other. And this, if you look at the instructions, it tells you which order you want the load order to be. And with Mod Manager, what's really cool, unlike Vortex, where you got to go through that weird load order tool, you could just drag and drop wherever you want this stuff to be. But the order that we installed it is the order that um, that is required to get these things to work. So let's go ahead and install this patch. Mod Manager download. Download. So let's go ahead and install this. So we're using MO2. Next, better HUD. This is if you're not using scanner encumbrance patch. This is a little confusing. It makes it seem like either or. But no, this is if you're not using scanner encumbrance and this is if you're using scanner encumbrance, but better HUD is always built into this patch. So you are also getting compatibility with better HUD. Click on next. And uh, the version with, if you just only installed health bar only, or health bar I forgot what the full name of that mod is, but we installed the health bar and the boost bar combined combo mod or whatever. So we're gonna click on this box here, click on next. And here's the color scheme that you chose. Remember I went with white, yellow, orange, red, go with whatever color scheme you went and then install. And there we go. So I have this in the load order that it needs to be in order for this to patch to work correctly, for these all mods to function correctly. But in Vortex, this didn't even show up in the load order tool that it provided. So I just couldn't get these mods to work through Vortex. I couldn't get them to play nice. And over here, you'll notice that there's a, a gray lightning bolt. What that means is, like if you click it, it shows that these two mods are completely overriding every single asset that's in this mod. Um, I actually know it's, it's actually the patch here. This mod author actually packaged this entire mod into their patch. So... Uh, you can actually uninstall it, right click and remove it. The only reason why I had you do it was for demonstration purposes. Like if you come across a little gray lightning bolt, but yeah, that's what that means. The next mod clean field, no intro videos and clean menu. You know, like when you first start up Starfield, you get the Bethesda splash animation and you get the little seizure warning or whatever. And then you get the little ad here. You get this stupid ad in, in, in the home screen or whatever this is called 
Well, it gets rid of that, and there's different versions of it. And this mod's a little weird. This is Vortex and MO2 install. Actually, this has been updated today. Yeah, today's the 11th. Before, it, would, it only had a Vortex version, and I had to manually do it. So, this is cool. Let's go with the MO2 install. Let's make sure this works. Downloads. Let's open it up. Install it. And you're going to get a full mod. Different FPS versions, and different... What, like, if you want to keep certain aspects of the screen. For me, I like to keep the Starfield logo. If you, if you want, you could just have a completely blank screen and all you'll have is the menu and the planet and the sun in the background. So I'm gonna keep the logo. Keep Starfield logo, 120 FPS. So yeah, see, f remove everything. Choose your FPS which, and what you want. MOTD, that's message of the day. That's that stupid little screen here. But yeah, it gives you a little preview if you hover your mouse over it. So go with what you want, click next. Notes, please read these notes. But this is after you install it. It's gonna be packaged in a mod if you read, wanna read them. So we're gonna install it, and there we go. Okay, so it's still having that problem. So it says no valid game data. So the way how it's installed, um, it, it, it won't work the way how it was done. Even though it looks like it's packaged correctly. So this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete this. Remove it, and we're going to do the manual download method, and I wanted to demonstrate this anyway, so let's go ahead and click manual download. Save it in a downloads folder, click save, close it. We're not going to manually install it, we're still going to use Mod Organizer too, so oh, go back to Mod Organizer. So click on this little, it's not giving me a little prompt, I don't even know what it's called. I think, oh there it is, install a new mod from an archive, click on this, and go to your downloads folder, click on clean field. And here it's going to be a little different because there's no full mod for the manual install. So click on manual and you're probably getting like a little message here with a little green arrow. Just click the green arrow until you can actually manipulate this stuff. And um, let's open up options, go to options. And here's uh, the different options here. Keep message of the day and all that. I want to keep the logo. So open this up and then you have all the different frame rates options here. Um, so choose whichever frame rate you want. Right click on whatever frame rate you're using. I set this as data directory. It says contents of data looks valid. Okay, and there we go. Now it works, no weird message here, right? But you see here, we, instead of giving us a version number, it's giving us the date that we installed it. We're gonna actually manually enter that data. You don't have to, I just like to do it. For those of you who want to know how to do it, right click on the mod, go into information, go into Nexus info, the mod ID is already correct, so just change it to uh, the version you're using. We're using 1.7, so 1.7. And, oh, it's red for some reason. Maybe it wants it the same manual install, whatever. But I like to have the version number so I know if there's like an update. Okay, it's not red here, so 1.7, good. And yeah, now it's gonna work. So even the mod, mod Organizer 2 version of the install didn't work, interesting. So there was that INI entry, which Hopefully you copied along with me, but if not, it's right here. So it's gonna be this bracketed. So highlight this, copy that. Go into Mod Organizer 2. Click on the little puzzle pieces, I and I editor. Go back to customs and then uh, paste it. And as you see, I already have it. So that's to make sure it fully um, works. For some reason I have a zero at the end of mine. I don't know if that matters, but let me delete that so it matches what they're instructing us to do. Click save and then close that up and then yeah, clean field is installed. Now from here we're gonna move on to visual mods like texture replacers and reshades and such. And um, I didn't like the default white um, look of the Mantis uh, uniform. So I went with uh, Bat Mantis. There's a lot of different options but I'm going with Bat Mantis. <laughs> so I'm going back into mod organizers. Like I said, I, I like to keep things uh, organized so I'm clicking on this tiny rich in, wrench and spanner, going into create separator, and I'm just gonna type in visuals. There we go, so we get this nice little tab here. Anyways, Bat Mantis. A lot of different versions. Here's the initial, if you want the Batman Beyond look, a black suit with a yellow symbol on the chest. I don't want the actual bat symbol on my costume, so I'm scrolling all the way down into the optional files and going into Bat Mantis, gray, black, no logo. Mod Manager download. So go to Mod Manager, double click this, click OK, and activate that. The next mod, the Eyes of Beauty, 
This mod offers new textures for your character's eyes. And it's not just your characters, it's pretty much everybody. Or maybe, maybe you gotta download specific versions of this replacement mod. This is this replaces all the vanilla texture pack one with a reflection on the iris. This is the one without the reflections. And we're gonna go with the main file here. Cause I want reflections, I want my eyes to be alive. Mod Magic Download. Yeah, this mod author is very famous for a mod by the same name, Dies of Beauty for Skyrim. A lot of people use it. I think I even used it. Anyways, let's go ahead and install that. And that's done. Easy to busy. Yes, yes. Next one. Fairly new mod. Effects, textures, enhance. Every last visual effect and star field remade and improved. This one has your game in a big way. Muzzle flashes, storms, blood, explosions, lasers, and everything else. So yeah, let's take a look at the comparison. Vanilla modded. Vanilla modded. Yeah, the flames, the fires look so much better. So yeah, let's install this. Mom Magic download. Downloading. Open up mod organizer. Let's install this. Keep the name. And that's installed. And now your download tab is getting like crowded. I mean, you could keep them here if you want to reinstall the mod or whatever. You just install it again, but I'm going to get rid of them, so we're going to right click and I'm going to delete all the downloads. There, nice and clean. We could breathe again. All right, now, natural LUTs. I've been using neutral LUTs, and this is another weird thing that I had with Vortex. I installed a neutral LUTs with Vortex, but it didn't work. The, the directory structure was correct and everything within the mod itself, but for some reason, installing it with Vortex didn't work with me. I didn't realize it wasn't working because I installed a reshade on top of that at the same time and I just thought that's what it was supposed to look like and honestly I kind of liked how it looked. It wasn't until I switched to Mod Organizer 2 where I realized how drastically it does uh, change the look of the game and I love it. But I like this more. Natural Lutz. The mod, even the mod author for Neutral Lutz mentioned it himself. He took like a brute force approach to, um, to his mod, whereas this one actually took a lot more subtler sort of tweaks into mind. So yeah, this is the one I like more. So this is the one I'm now using. So we're gonna go into files. And I'm gonna use the, the main version here. This one, the enhanced version, it enhances its enhanced version of this. It's brighter, has more contrast and more vibrant colors, but because of the reshade I'm using is what was specifically tweaked for this version, I'm gonna go with the main version. So manual download, save it. They don't have a mod manager version. It doesn't matter because you know what we're going to do. Go back to the mod organizer, click on this, install from archive and choose natural LUTs, open manual. Everything's good. Content of data looks valid. Click OK. And there it is. Natural LUTs is now installed. Next up, I'm going to install real flashlight. Simple retexture of the flashlight gobo to remove banding artifacts and make it look like a real flashlight. So we'll go into files. And you can get this version here, which gives like, I don't know, a sharper edge to it or whatever, but I like this one. The real flashlight softer version. Use whichever one you want. Mod Manager download. I said Mod Manager download. Thank you. And then going to install this. Okay. Boop. And then next up. Next up, we're going to install our reshade. So there's a additional steps here. It's saying to drag your preset. So we're not gonna use our mod manager to install it. We have to install this manually because this is going into the root directory of Starfield and not into the data folder. That's what mainly what mod organizer does. It just installs things into the data folder, but it uses a virtual filing system. So it doesn't actually install them directly into your Starfield folder. It used a virtual filing system. I would explain what that is, but I don't know what that is. I just know that it doesn't actually physically install everything into your Starfield, um, Starfield directory, therefore keeping it clean, whatever. Anyways, it says to download the latest version of uh, the latest version of Reshade. I have the tab here, but before we do that, we're going to install uh, Quantum Reshade. So go into files and you see two different versions here, Quantum Reshade with um, no specific LUTs in mind and we're going to go with this one reshade natural LUTs main version here so we installed natural LUTs so that we're going to use this version we're going to manually download this save it close it go to download folder minimize this go into quantum reshade and all that's in there is an ini folder and we're going to drag this into uh the starfield directory so 
uh, I, I still have my comments folder open. So here's Starfield right there. And I'm just going to drag this into this. I already have it. So I'm replacing mine for you. It'll just drag and drop. There we go. Close that up. We can close that up too, honestly. All right. Having done that, we are now going to install the reshade. So here it is, the reshade page. Click download. And we're going to click on this version here, download reshade 5.9.2. And it's going to go into the download folder. And I'm going to actually relocate it for reasons. I'll tell you the reasons. So here's the executable. Don't, don't click on the executable from here. I'm going to copy, go into um, my root directory where I have my star filled. Uh, okay, this is the one I was experimenting with. The mod organizer star filled folder here. I'm just going to place it in here because I don't actually want to get rid of it. So you could create like a new reshade folder if you want to keep it a bit more organized. It doesn't hurt it to put it here, but this is where I put it. So let's install it. Double click it. And a bunch of different games that you might have installed on your system will show up. In the search bar, just type in star and you'll find Starfield. Click next. All right. We're going to choose DirectX 10, 11, 12. Next. Now it says select a preset to install. So. Nat um, yeah, Quantum Reshade for Natural LUTs is the one we're going to use. So browse, it should take you to your Starfield folder immediately. If it doesn't, well, navigate to it, find it. And so, yeah, you can see the different reshades I was using. So I was originally using the, reg uh, the, origin the original Quantum Reshade, but we want the LUTs version. So open that up and click Next. And it automatically chooses all the shaders and stuff that you need. Do not click on anything else. Click on Next. And boom, that's it, finished. Now, if you want to experiment with different reshades, you know, you don't have to delete uh, the .ini for um, the reshade that you're using. Just reopen this, choose Starfield again. Click on Starfield, next. Same same steps here, next. Uh, don't say update, just say modify. Next, choose uh, the new reshade that you downloaded, and um, yeah, Bob Junko. And that, as they say, is that. Now all I have to do is start the game. All right, so starting the game, we got this message from Baka Kill My Games DLO. It says, uh, data folder has been detected in Starfield My Games folder, and it's giving you the path here. Mine is under users, Boda documents, my games. So um, let's go there. So we're going to go to my C drive, go into users, Boda, and then what was it? Documents, My Games, Starfield, and oh my god, there is a data folder. So let's go ahead and delete that, close that up. It says uh, when you have successfully done this, this message will stop appearing and you will be able to launch the game. So let's try it now. All right, so uh, if you keep getting this message here and you're deleting the data folder into My, uh, data folder into my Games folder or whatever, and it keeps regenerating, this is the solution. It says you have to go into the mod, and it tells you here through Mod Organizer 2. Right click on the mod and MO2, click on information, look for the Baka Kill My Games that INI file, then change uh, B show message uh, true to false. So let's do that first. Let's go ahead and close this message, then go into Mod Organizer 2, right click Baka My Games, and we're going to go into information, go into INI files. Here's Baka Kill My Games. So we're going to change this to false. And then close it. Save it, yes. So let's try that again. Now we're opened up. And as you can see, clear field is working. Excellent, we don't have all that extra clutter. You saw like uh, for you guys, um, you're gonna get like a res uh, message about reshade to press home. You can see something about a tutorial here. Just click skip. And then once you do that, this is what I want you to do. You don't have to do this, but I like to have this option and I want you to have this option as well. Click on settings. And then right here, you can see a bunch of uh, places where you can put a hotkey. For the one we're looking at is effect toggle hotkey. Click on it and I use page up because um, I don't think Starfield needs to page up for anything. So that's what I use. And what that, that lets you do is to toggle the reshade on and off. So you could like, you know, compare contrast vanilla visuals versus reshade, you know, it's nice to have. To press home again, to exit out of there. So let's check out some of the mods that we installed. What do you say? So this is where I'm at in the game, not very far. 
All right, so right away you can see that the visuals have definitely changed. I'm going first person. But yeah, the colors are popping, looks very clear. You don't get that weird filtered look, the weird colored filters from the vanilla LUTs. And yeah, test out your hotkey, press page up. And you can see, you can toggle on and off the reshade. So that looks good. So let's, what's some of the things? Let's look at, um, I forgot what the mod is called, but you see in my little compass area, you can see the mass values and the local time, universal time. So that mod's working. What else? Let's open up, um, whoa, right away. You can see how snappy everything is. So yeah, everything's feeling snappy. So Star UI is working correctly. Everything is good. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. And let's make sure that better HUD works. So what I'm going to do to test this out, we're just going to go to a star system I haven't been to. So we get that discovered message. So I'm just going to go over here. Let's go to Sirius. So Sirius. Oh no, Cabo. All right, so you see the banner, Sirius is at the bottom of the screen, so Better Hut is working. Die, mother! <laughs> Anyways, looks like everything's working. But yeah, whenever you install new mods or whatever, you want to definitely test out whether or not that mod's working, right? So yeah, I want to thank you for uh, placing some trust in me. I know, you know, when you follow a guide on YouTube, you're sort of placing your trust in uh, whoever's made the video, so thank you for that. So. Go forth and make the experience you want, make the tweaks you want, install the mods you want for Start Build. So thank you for coming by, I really appreciate your support, your support. I love you, and I'll see you in the next video.